So let's take a look at arc length. Now let's say we have a function f of x, and we want to find the length of the curve of f of x from the x bounds of a to b. Well then we can use the arc length formula. Well if you want to find the arc length of the curve, the formula L is going to be equal to the integral from a to b of the square root of 1 plus, and then we have f prime of x squared times dx. Now let's say instead of a function in terms of x and x bounds, you're given a function in terms of y, and you're also given y bounds, ranging from c to d. Well then the arc length formula in this case, all we have to do is change the variable. So it's going to be the integral from c to d of the square root of 1 plus, well we have f prime of y, and then we square that, and then times dy. So for these next set of problems, let's go ahead and find the length of the curve. So for number one, we have y equals 1 plus 6x to the 3 halves power, and our x bounds are from 0 to 1. Once again, we are given a function in terms of x, and we're given x bounds as well. So the formula is going to be the integral from a to b of the square root of 1 plus f prime of x squared, and then times dx. So filling out the formula here, it's going to equal the integral. Now a and b are just our bounds. So our lower bound is 0 is a, the upper bound 1 is going to be b. So we have the integral from 0 to 1 of the square root of 1 plus. Now if y equals 1 plus 6x to the 3 halves, then the derivative f prime of x is going to equal, well the derivative of 1 is 0, derivative of 6x to the 3 halves, we're just going to use the power rule, is going to be 18 over 2, which is 9, and then times x to the 3 halves minus 1, so 9x to the 1 half. Now I can rewrite 9x to the 1 half as 9 times the square root of x, so if 9 times the square root of x is going to be f prime of x, we're going to square that, so 9 times the square root of x squared is going to be 81x. And then we have times dx on the outside. Now in order to integrate this, we can just use u substitution. So if u equals 1 plus 81x, then du equals 81dx. Now if I isolate dx, dx is going to equal du divided over the 81. Now I can go ahead and plug everything back into the integral. So we get the integral from 0 to 1 of, once again we made 1 plus 81x our u, so we have the square root of u, or u the 1 half, times dx, now dx is equal to du over 81. So we have du over 81. And now 1 over 81 can come outside the integral as a constant, so then we have 1 over 81 times the integral from 0 to 1 of u to the 1 half, or the square root of u times du. Now evaluating this integral, obviously we have 1 over 81 outside as a constant times the integral of u to the 1 half, which is going to be u to the 3 halves, divided by 3 halves or multiplied by 2 thirds. So now 1 over 81 times 2 thirds is going to be 2 over 243. And then we have times u to the 3 halves. We can go ahead and substitute back in our u. So then we have times 1 plus 81x the entire thing to the 3 halves power. Now we can evaluate from our bounds of 0 to 1. So now when we evaluate, once again we have 2 over 243 as a constant. Now times, when I plug in 1 for x, we have 1 plus 81, which is 82. So 82 to the 3 halves power. Minus, when I plug in 0 for x, we have 0 plus 1, which is 1. And 1 to the 3 halves power is just going to be 1. Now you can simplify or rewrite this if you would like to, but this is generally going to be the final answer. Now for number 2 we have x equals 1 third times the square root of y times y minus 3, and our y bounds range from 1 to 9. So realize our equation is in terms of y and we're given y bounds, so we have to use the formula where the arc length equals the integral from c to d, once again those are our y bounds, of the square root of 1 plus f prime of y, our equation or the derivative of our equation in terms of y, squared, and then times dy. So let's go ahead and fill out the formula. The length is going to equal the integral. Now our y bounds, once again, are going to go from 1 to 9 of the square root of 1 plus. Now if x equals 1 third times the square root of y times y minus 3, then in order to find the derivative of x, our x equation, with respect to the y, because once again that's our variable that we're deriving, because we have two functions basically being multiplied by each other, we have to use the product rule to derive. So once again, we're going to take the derivative of the first function, 1 third times the square root of y. So 1 third is just a constant, and the derivative of the square root of y is going to be 1 over 2 times the square root of y, times the second function unchanged, so times y minus 3, 
plus the derivative of the second function, well, derivative of y minus 3 is just 1, times the first function unchanged. So 1 times 1 third square root of y is just going to be 1 third times the square root of y. Now simplifying here, we have y minus 3 on the numerator over, we have 6 times the square root of y on the denominator, and then plus, we have the square root of y over 3. Now I'm actually going to go ahead and combine these two fractions. So in order to find common denominators, the common denominator in this case is going to be 6 times the square root of y. So I'm going to multiply the second fraction, both the numerator and denominator, by 2 times the square root of y. So then we'll get y minus 3 over 6 times the square root of y, and then plus, well, square root of y times 2 times the square root of y is just going to be 2y over we have 3 times 2 times the square root of y, which is going to be 6 times the square root of y. Now y plus 2y is going to be 3y minus 3, all over 6 times the square root of y. Now if I simplify a little bit, I can factor out a 3 from the numerator. So we have 3 times y minus 1 over 6 times the square root of y. 3 over 6 is going to be 1 half. So we have y minus 1 over 2 times the square root of y. So now given that f prime of y is going to be y minus 1 over 2 times the square root of y, we're going to go ahead and square that. So then we get y minus 1 squared over, well 2 times the square root of y squared is going to be 4y, and then we multiply by dy. Now in order to integrate this, I'm actually going to simplify what's inside of the radical first. So I'm going to actually combine these two to create one whole fraction. Now I'm going to multiply 1 by 4y over 4y, so I can get common denominators. So I'm going to rewrite 1 as 4y over 4y, plus we have obviously y minus 1 squared over 4y. Now I'm going to foil y minus 1 squared, so we get 4y plus, now y minus 1 squared once again is going to be y squared minus 2y plus 1. All over, we have the common denominator of 4y. Now we have y squared, 4y minus 2y is going to be positive 2y, and then we have plus 1 all over 4y. Now realize that this is a perfect square trinomial, so I can actually factor that into y plus 1 squared over 4y. And the reason why I did that is so I can get rid of the radical that's on the outside. So when I rewrite our arc length formula, we have the integral from 1 to 9 of the square root of, now we've written this entire thing or rewritten it into y plus 1 squared over 4y times dy. So now I can rewrite the integral from 1 to 9. Now the square root of y plus 1 squared is just going to be y plus 1 over the square root of 4y, which is going to be 2 times the square root of y times dy. Now in order to integrate this, I need to split this up into two different fractions. So I'll rewrite it as the integral from 1 to 9 of, we have y over 2 times the square root of y, and then plus 1 over 2 times the square root of y times dy. So when I simplify here, we have the integral from 1 to 9 of, now I can rewrite y over 2 times the square root of y as 1 half y to the 1 half power, and then plus I can rewrite 1 half or 1 over 2 times the square root of y as 1 half y to the negative 1 half power, all times dy. So now when I integrate, the integral of 1 half y to the 1 half is going to be 1 half times y to the 3 halves, divided by 3 halves or multiplied by 2 thirds, and then plus the integral of 1 half y to the negative 1 half, which is going to be 1 half times y to the positive 1 half, because remember negative 1 half plus 1 is positive 1 half, and then divided by 1 half, which is the same thing as multiplying by 2. So right here the 2's will cancel, so we'll get 1 over 3 y to the 3 halves, and then we have plus, well the 1 half and the 2 will cancel, so we have plus y to the 1 half power. So now we can evaluate from the y bounds of, once again, 1 to 9. Now when I plug in 9 for y, we get 1 third times 9 to the 3 halves. Now 9 to the 3 halves is 27. And then we have plus 9 to the 1 half, which is going to be 3. And then minus, when I plug in 1 for y, we have 1 third times 1 to the 3 halves, which is going to be 1 third. And then plus 1 to the 1 half, which is just going to be 1. Now, 3, 1 third times 27 is 9, 9 plus 3 is 12, so we have 12 minus, now 1 third plus 1, or 1 third plus 3 over 3 is going to be 4 over 3. Now, in order to find common denominators, I can rewrite 12 as 36 over 3, so then 36 over 3 minus 4 over 3 is going to give us our final answer of 32 over 3.